Smut. Thanks for coming. I'm a British Asian, and I don't feel British, and I don't feel a lot very Asian either, right? I feel very British or Asian, right? So I wonder what I can do to feel more British around white people. Go to the opera, eat bland food, <laughs> see dead people. Because only white people get contacted by the afterlife. White people humour ghosts because they're white too. They get into a conversation with the ghost. People say to me, do you believe in ghosts? I'm like, well, there's no Asian ghosts. <laughs> if I was a ghost, why would I want to come back? Who would I come back to? It's not like I could visit my parents. They'd be like, you can't even die properly. <laughs> <laughs> my parents, right, they don't even know I'm a comedian. Like, you know, I can't tell them. If I said, hey, I'm a comedian, they'd be like, are you a lesbian? <laughs> because I have opinions. <laughs> Thanks, one, one Asian guy in the front. Yeah. <laughs> so my friend said to me, are you sure you want to do the BBC Red Button show if your parents don't know? I was like, no one's pressing the red button, okay? <laughs> See, that's why you're here. Because, uh, you know, my, my mum always says, don't press the red button, it's dangerous. <laughs> you can press the brown button, <laughs> but there's no brown button. So, yeah. You know, and recently, right, my white friends started complaining to me about how, you know, since they've graduated and been around the world, this year they'll have to settle for a trip to Butlins. And they were complaining to me about going to Butlins. And I have to confess, I lost my sympathy for them because I wouldn't mind going to Butlins. But it's not like I can just turn up in Butlins unannounced. People would be like, oh, great, Al-Qaeda's here too. <laughs> Butlins, Butlins is the perfect UKIP holiday destination. I don't want to scare the holiday goers. Even racists deserve a break. <laughs> If I show up, they're back on duty. <laughs> and the truth is, right, Asians don't really go on holiday, so unless we make an announcement about a change in policy, <laughs> I think I might freak people out. People think I'm kidding when I talk about this, but it's true, Asians don't go on holiday. There's fixed reasons why an Asian might be traveling. We might be migrating or being deported. But none of these reasons is leisure and recreation. I've been to India. Being groomed by your relatives for an arranged marriage does not constitute a holiday. <laughs> and that's the only place I've been. Like, Asians don't go on holiday. You probably don't believe me. You think this is just stand-up. But it's true. Have you ever seen me next to you on a sunbed in Ibiza? <laughs> no. Have you seen me in the queue for the Statue of Liberty? Uh-uh. You will not see me throwing shapes in Magaluf. Because <laughs> Asians don't go on holiday, right? Asians have a strict vocation in life. You study, you get qualified, you work. That's it. Black people go on holiday. I've seen it on Instagram. <laughs> They're like, smile for the camera. But Asians don't go on holiday. Like, white people have summer and winter holidays. White people go skiing in the winter. I said, Mum, can I go? She said, what do you need to go skiing for? It's snowing here. Put on skates, I'll push you down the hill. <laughs> I saw some of my Asian neighbours with some luggage once. I stopped them, I got so excited. I ran up to them, I said, where are you going? He looked at me offended. We're not going anywhere. We got these for storage to make room in the house. <laughs> So I started asking Asians, don't you go on holiday? They said, what is holiday? I said, when you go to another country, to do what? Nothing, you go for the culture. I already got culture. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to go on holiday, I just don't want to go by myself. My girlfriends go to Cancun every year, but what would I wear on a beach, a burkini? <laughs> 
I started wearing, started wearing a headscarf when I came of age. Um, and some of you might think I'm oppressed for wearing the scarf. And I understand. But we all cover something, right? You draw the line there. I draw the line there. I'm comfortable covering my hair the same way you're comfortable covering your tits. <laughs> And it's not for me to say you're oppressed by your top and your bra. <laughs> Some people say to me, you should take off the headscarf in the name of feminism. And I'm like, is that what we're doing now? Is it the more clothes I take off, the more feminist I am? <laughs> if I was walking down a high street naked, would I be the best feminist? And as much as I'm not comfortable with people telling me to take clothes off, I'm also not comfortable with people telling me to put more clothes on. Like I was walking down the street recently, this Asian guy, religiously dressed, he stopped me and he said, cover up, you should cover up. I was like, have you got x-ray vision? <laughs> what can you see? I do draw the line at covering my face because, you know, I'm a stand-up comedian. Where would the mic go? <laughs> some, people, some people think my parents make me wear the scarf, and that's not true. No one in my family wears a headscarf, and they don't even like me wearing it. Like, sometimes when I leave the house, they say, why are you wearing that? People will think you're going to blow up the bus. <laughs> You're never going to find a husband in 